vowel mo or something like that. It's can I buy a vowel? It seems like it should have another vowel in it. But anyway, the name of this mini electric chainsaw is OLMLMO. You can pronounce that however you wish. Uh, yes, it's another mini electric chainsaw. I've done reviews on a few of these different ones before. What's uh, nice about this one is it's a little bit longer. It's an 8 inch and it has an oiler where a lot of them don't. You have to manually spray oil on them or sprinkle oil on them all the time. So this company sent me this to uh, check out and demonstrate and we got lots of places here I can demonstrate it on. So I'm going to get this thing unboxed here. We'll see what we got. I know I'm going to have to charge the batteries up or battery. I don't know how many come with it. I haven't opened it yet. So it's well packed, I will say that. So we have a user manual right there, which I will maybe take a peek at or maybe not. And we have a battery. And we have a battery, so it's good to have two batteries. And of course we have a charger. Complete with cord, it's a good thing. And some little safety glasses. We have a spare chain. And some little tiny gloves that will not fit me. Who are these made for, anyway? These things are tiny. Maybe my great-granddaughter can play with those. She's three. And then there's a couple tools in here. There's a wrench and a screwdriver, which we will probably need for adjusting the chain. And then, of course, we have the chainsaw itself, like so. It's nice. This one has a guard over the chain. I don't have any of them that have that, so that's kind of a nice little feature. As an oiler here, the oil tank is going to be easy to fill. I need to look at this and read about it, see if it's automatic oiling. It must be because I don't see a little button on here to push oil into it. I have one where it's got a little rubber bulb on it and you push to oil the chain. So let me get some stuff moved around. i got to charge some batteries, I'm sure. We'll check this thing out. Okay, for the batteries, you get two of them and you obviously cannot charge it while it's on the saw. You need to take it off. It plugs into this charger here. You see it also has one of those little ports in there if you have one of the uh, chargers with the DIN plug on it. So this only plugs on there one way. There's no uh, indicators on here to let you know how much life or how much is charges in the battery. And we'll plug this in and the light turns red. So we'll have to wait until we get a charge in it. Otherwise, I'm going to take this here, take the guard off, stick a battery in it just to see if it has a charge. There's a button here on the side you have to push before you can pull the trigger. You can't just pull the trigger, you have to push this button first. And there is a charge in it. I don't know how much. It is a, what they call a soft start, and it's a brushless motor. That means when you pull the trigger, it doesn't instantly run at full speed. It ramps up. Doesn't take long, but it does. So right here would be the port to put some oil in. So I'll have to go fetch me some bar and chain oil. Got a little keeper in there. Well, you can pull that out, but that kind of keeps you from losing the cap. So let me find some oil. Okay, so assuming I'm going to make a mess doing this, I put a piece of cardboard underneath here just in case I have a little spill. I got a little shop towel handy because I may not be real swift with this. This is just... Uh, your generic super tech bar and chain oil. I buy this by the gallon because we use a lot of it with our different chainsaws. So let's see how much of a spill I can make here. Well, not too bad. Once you get up to where it's kind of full, it fills up really fast. So that neck is small in there. Keep that in mind, so I can put my cap back on, my little thingy back down in there is a keeper. Yeah, a little bit of spill there. There's a gauge on the side, yep, got out of the way, you see right here, 
There's a gauge that lets you know how much oil is in there. Right now it's full, so it's all the way up to there. And it has a minimum mark, so when it gets down to that minimum mark, you're going to want to refill your oil. Clean up a little more of my spill here. Now I'll get into, while things are charging here, I'll show you how to adjust the chain. Okay, chain adjustment. As you can see, this chain right now, as it come from the factory, is a little bit on the loose side, so I need to tighten that up a little bit. To do that, you will loosen these two nuts right here, and then there's a screw right down in here that you would turn with a screwdriver to tighten the chain up. So I'll give you a little quick demonstration here. Now you don't need to take these nuts off, just loosen them up. About like so. Now you'll see here this is a little bit too loose. So using your screwdriver, you put the screwdriver into this slot right here, and you turn that a little bit, get the chain up to tightness. Could use a little more. Since this is brand new, after the first cut or two, this chain will stretch. They all do. I don't care what brand you've got, that chain will stretch. So once you have that set, we we'll simply tighten these nuts back up. And of course, do this with the battery off of it. Don't do it with the battery on it. Even though it's got a safety on the trigger, don't be playing with that chain when it's still got a battery on there. So from there, helps put the battery on the right direction. There we go. and that will self-lubricate the chain as it runs. Well, I'm waiting for these batteries to charge up and it, it says a one and a half hour charge time, charge one up fully from being dead. So it's looking at their instruction manual here. Uh, they show you how to change the chain, how to make the adjustments, that type of thing. Make sure you put the chain on the right direction, of course. And it's got a little picture here that shows you which direction that's supposed to go. And then here again is the adjustment for tightening. Then how to take the battery on and off of it. And that type of thing. Cutting skills. Here's just some skills here to make yourself a lumberjack. No, not. And a little bit of maintenance and cleaning and environment and warranty terms and that kind of stuff. Got a little troubleshooting guide here about, you know, battery is dead or the motor runs, the chain rotates, but saw it on the cut. Could be on backwards, it's not sharp. And you can sharpen these uh, chains with a chainsaw file. That's a subject of a whole other video. But manual is well written and it has color pictures in it, so that's kind of a big plus there for those that are not familiar with these. Okay, yeah, I was going to demonstrate this outdoors, but it's just blazing hot out there, so, and I didn't want to haul camera equipment and everything out there, so I just went out and uh, this is off of an apple tree, a little branch. This was cut some time back. The other end is a fresh cut, and I did cut it off with this. As you can see, it's got sawdust on it now. To, to use this, again, you push the, side, the button on the side and pull the trigger. I don't know how much life is in this battery. This one hasn't been charged yet. It was just as it came out of the box. So you push the button in on the side, and it'll cut just like that. Why am I making all these little pieces? Well, actually, I'm, this is apple. I'm going to let those dry. I'll use them in my smoker. It's green now, but those chunks would be good to use in my smoker. So how about something a little thicker and heavier and bigger around? Let's turn this thing around, get on the other end of it. A lot of sticks here. Get out of the way. As you can see there, it just goes right through it. Yeah, 
Okay, at this point, now I need to tighten my chain up because as you can see it's getting loose. That's because a new chain always stretches. Okay, so I've tightened my chain up again. Now I'm getting up into the crotch part of this and that's always more difficult to cut than just a straight cut. It's also longer. Well, as you can see, this thing has pretty good power to it. Anytime you're going with the grain, you're going to get all these little long pieces, but so this guy, I'm working this battery pretty good here and it's not even fully charged. Okay, from a safety standpoint, I'm not going to go any smaller with that. So, there's demonstration of this Omlamo, I guess. Omlamo, I, I don't know, you pronounce it any way you want. Uh, nice little chainsaw. Performed real well, even with a uh, battery that was not fully charged. Uh, as I said, I originally intended on uh, doing so, some of this stuff outdoors with uh, some tree pruning we needed to do out in what I call the back 40. But it is just blazing hot today. And I, it's fairly cool in the shop here. I mean, I worked up a sweat just going out cutting that one little piece off. So, if you'd like to get one of these, there'll be a link in the description. Or you can get them on Amazon. And it appears to be very durable. It appears to be very well built. And from what I saw there with what I was just cutting, apple is not exactly a soft thing to cut. So, it did an excellent job. Of course, I did have to adjust the chain because, again, when you have a new chain, and I don't care what brand it is or anything, after you use that chain for a few cuts, it will stretch and you'll need to tighten it up again. And then as you proceed to keep going and doing some projects, keep checking your chain because over time, they all stretch. So, something to keep in mind, if you let your chain get too loose, it will not only cut inefficiently, it will wear the bar incorrectly, it can wear the sprocket incorrectly, or it could just jump off the bar. And you don't want that either. This does have a pretty good guard on it here. So if that chain could come off and slap back, and I've had that happen before on gas chainsaws, it won't get your hand. And of course you should wear gloves. I didn't have any on here, but uh, you really should wear gloves when you're using a chainsaw. Again, you can sharpen it using a chainsaw file. I don't know what size this would be exactly, but I'm sure I would have a chain for it, or a, I should say a file for it. But I'm not going to show how to sharpen a chain. That's a whole other subject. So now i got a mess to clean up. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Again, uh, this was provided to me to test and demonstrate. Did a little quick demonstration here, even though it is 97 degrees. That's Fahrenheit. In centigrade, I'd be melting. Although I almost feel like I'm melting now. But thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. We'll see you in the next one.